Welcome back. Today we're going to talk about algebraic representations of dilations. Okay, first of all, let's talk about how to perform a dilation. Now we talked a little bit about this in the last lesson, um, and it's fairly easy to perform a dilation because all you're going to do is you're going to take the x-y coordinates and you're going to multiply each of the x and the y by the scale factor. Now for enlargements, the k is greater than 1. For reductions, the k is less than 1. The k is the scale factor here. Okay. So, for instance, if the preimage is uh, positive to uh, 2 right here, so let's start to name, label these A, B, C, D, E, F, uh, G. Okay, so if A is 2, 2, then the image um, under a scale dilation of 3, or a scale factor of 3, um, it's going to become 6, 6. So it'll be graphed right here. So there's A prime. Okay. Uh, B prime is at uh, 2, negative 1. So the new one is going to be multiplied by 3, so it's 6, negative 3. So positive 6, 1, 2, 3, there's B prime. Okay. Um, now uh, C is at 1, negative 1. So C prime will be at 3, negative 3. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. There's C prime. D is at 1, negative 2. So D prime is going to be at 3, negative 6. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. D prime. And maybe I want to connect these as I go here so it is sort of mapping the figure out for me. Um, e is at negative 2, 2. So now it's going to be at 6, uh, negative 6, 6. So negative 6 and, um, whoops, it's actually at, uh, negative 2, negative 2. Okay. And so it's going to be at negative 6, negative 6. That's E prime. Okay. Um, F is at negative 2, positive 1. So now it's going to be at negative 3, comma, 3. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. What are we missing? It actually should be right above... Whoops, it should be right above E, so I know that I made a mistake here. So it should be negative 2, 1. So this is negative 2, 1. So this should be negative 6, comma, 3. So negative 6, 1, 2, 3. This is F prime. And then G is at negative 1, 2. And so it becomes at uh, G prime becomes negative 3, 6. So we go 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There's G, and I'm actually missing a point here. So this was at negative 1, 1, and this becomes at negative 3, 3. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Okay. Um, so let's label this old one. Let's label, label this G. So this is G prime, and this would be H and H prime. Let me go ahead and connect these figures. Okay. So um, the dilation of a scale factor of 3 makes it so that every side length is 3 times longer than what it used to be. So for instance, side length BC uh, makes, uh, uh, under a dilation of a scale factor of 3, um, makes side length B prime C prime 3 times longer. It makes it 3 units instead of 1 unit. Okay, if you're performing a reduction, so this one is a suggested reduction, or it, we're going to reduce it by half. So we're going to take all the xy coordinates and we are going to multiply them by a half. So here we have, let's label them A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Okay, um, so A is at negative 4 and negative 4, 2. Let's just go ahead and put this. This is at negative, or this at uh, 0, 5. Um, C is at 4, 2. D is at 2, 2. Um, e is at 2, negative 4. F is at 2, negative 4. Uh, sorry, negative 2, negative 4. And G is at negative 2, positive 2. Okay, so what we're going to do is just multiply everything by a half. Zero times a half is just zero, and this gets to 2.5.
right? Five times a half is 2.5. Uh, then we just have 2, 1. We have 1, 1. We have 1, negative 2. We have negative 1, negative 2. And negative 1, 1. Okay, so let's go ahead and plot these points. Negative 2, positive 1 gets me A prime. 0, 2 and a half gets me B prime. Connect them as I go. Um, and then I have 2, 1. So 2, 1 is C prime here. Um, then we have uh, 1, 1. Oh, let me see. This is A, B, C, D. So D was at 2, 2. So now it's just going to be at 1, 1. Oh, yeah, that makes sense because it's right across from C. Um, and then we have 1, negative 2, 1, 2. Right here. And then it's essentially going to go over like this. Right, so the next one would be um, negative one, negative two right here. And then we have negative one, positive one right here. Oh, so we're missing a little bit of the one, two, three, four, one, two, that's fine. Actually, so A should be at, A, A prime was plotted wrong, it should be at negative two, one. So this was at, making a few mistakes today, so negative two, positive one should be there. There's A because then this comes up to BG. Okay, And so what you can see is that the figure is inside, the reduction is inside the other figure because the center of dilation that we always use, I haven't mentioned this before, the center of dilation that we use in eighth grade is going to be the origin. Okay, And when the center of dilation is the origin, it means that we have this really quick trick of multiplying all the coordinates by the scale factor in order to get the, in, um, the enlargement or the reduction. Okay, if I were to dilate the figure below by a scale factor of 3, the first thing I'd have to do is come up with all the coordinates, A, B, and C. So A is 1, 1. Uh, B is 3, 1. And C is 1, 3. Okay, so a scale factor of 3 means that we just multiply all the coordinates by... 3. Okay, and we plot them again. So uh, 3, 3 would be here. This is A prime. Um, then we'd have 9, 3. So 9, 1, 2, 3. This is B prime. And uh, C prime would be 3 and 9. There's C prime. So here is our figure right here. Now, what you'll notice is that um, the orientation hasn't changed, right? So A is still to the left of B, A prime is to the left of B prime. Um, in the original, in the pre-image, A was right below C, and now in the image, A prime is right below C. So the figure just looks like it's been slid up and uh, increased, right? So the orientation doesn't change, but the size does change. That was one of the properties of dilations that we went over in a few videos ago. So all the lesson was today was to show you actually how to perform a dilation either with a scale factor that's um, greater than one or with a scale factor that's less than one. Okay, and remember the center of dilation for eighth grade is always the origin and that's why we can just multiply the coordinates by their um, by a certain number, that we can just do it with coordinates. If the center of dilation was something outside of the figure like right here or something that's outside that's not the origin, if it was like the, here, then we'd have a more complicated procedure in order to um, dilate it, right? Okay, and finally, the proper properties of dilation says that, first of all, the pre-image and the image are not congruent, but there is a relationship between the pre-image and the image in that they are similar. Now, you learned about similar triangles when you were in seventh grade. You learned that the, um, the ratios of the corresponding side lengths are uh, create proportions or uh, they're equal ratios so for instance if i take a prime b prime or the length of it and i divide it by um, the length of a b i would have a prime b prime is six units and a b is three units or two units sorry and i get three um, so a prime b prime uh, this line segment is a corresponding line segment to a b because the, um, that's the line segment in the pre-image and then in the image so here another a pair of corresponding sides are a prime c prime and um, a c 
And again, the length is six over two, which is three. Okay. Now we don't have a trick to find the length of uh, b prime c prime. We are going to learn how to do that when we get to Pythagorean theorem, but we don't know that quite yet. But um, I can assure you that because we achieved um, a prime b prime c prime with a dilation with a scale factor of three, I know that when I'm able to calculate this length, I know that is three times this length, okay? Or the length of CB is a third of the length of C prime B prime. So we call that property similarity. They're not equal to each other, but they create proportions when you uh, divide them. The other interesting thing about dilation is that orientation is maintained. It's the one of only two of the transformations that maintains orientation. Now, um, some of you are, uh, maybe getting confused between um, position and orientation. Position is the coordinates that a, a vertex takes on. So A, for instance, takes on 1, 1, and A prime takes on um, 3, 3. Okay, so it's not true that they have the same position. A and A prime do not have the same position in respect to the coordinate plane, but it is true that A and B, the way that A and that A has the same position in relationship to the other vertices of the triangle. So if I'm, if I'm not looking at the coordinate and I'm just looking at the way that the triangle looks, right? Uh, B is to the right of A, B prime is to the right of A prime. C prime is above A prime, which is the same relationship that C had with A. So if I just look at the triangle, the way the vertices sit with each other, in relationship to each other, the positions that they are in relation to each other is the same from the pre-image to the image. And that's what I mean by orientation. The actual coordinates are not the same, but the, um, the figure does not look like it's been uh, flipped left and right or up and down, or it doesn't look like it's been rotated, right? It's, so the only two transformations that do this are dilation and uh, translation, right? T translation just looks like a slide. Um, otherwise, you have a rotation or a flip of the orientation, right? And that's it. That's the end of the lesson for today.